All right, today we're gonna talk about Taiwan, which is one of the reason why I started this YouTube channel. Initially, I thought it would be easy to make this video, but it ended up to be a little bit tricky because halfway through the process, I start to get a little bit emotional and my eyes start to become a little bit watery and I have to go out for a walk and listen to some smooth jazz music to calm myself and come back to finish the video. As usual, I'm gonna put timestamp down in the bottom and then I'm also gonna split the video in, actually into two parts. The content is a little bit different. They are related somewhat, but I think it's better to put this video as an uh, independent video. Before we go into the main content today, I wanna show you guys this survey done by Election Study Center, National Chengqi University. It is a survey regarding Taiwan independence versus unification with the mainland. And it's done throughout 30 years from 1994 to 2023. And look at that graph, it's informative, but also very chaotic. People who want independence immediately, there's people who want unification, people who don't know study, oh God. I'm gonna just condense it into three. So today, well, not today, last year, 2023, okay? 25.3% of the people in Taiwan want independence or leaning on independence. Only 7.4% want unification with mainland China or leaning towards that direction. And then a mass majority, 67.3% want to maintain status quo or don't know what to do, basically. I'm going to introduce to you guys two guests here today, okay? The first one is Lady Fan. I like her. I find her to be very charming and represent the mainstream media in Taiwan, mainstream narrative. Also, I assume mainstream mindset. People from Taiwan, please correct me if I'm wrong. And there's nothing wrong with mainstream or I would say any narrative. The second guess will be this guy. Sorry, I cannot show you guys his picture or name because today's Taiwan there's a lot of government censorship and I don't want to get this guy into trouble he's a professor that's all I can say and don't ask me for his uh, background information and uh, he's also has something to say I would say Lady Fan is more pro status quo maintaining status quo and also leaning towards independence. This second professor, which I agree a lot with, I, I'm not sure if he's leaning towards unification, but he's definitely against independence. So if you find Lady Fan's uh, narrative and information to be too mainstream, you can skip to the professor directly because I find what the professor said here to be extremely intelligent to me at least, but I'm not against any particular uh, narrative at all. Oh, also for people who don't understand what the Taiwan status quo is, it is very confusing, I would say. There's this one China policy, but then Taiwan is also like some kind of de facto independent nation. And it shouldn't receive the kind of international recognition like a normal nation, but US also has some kind of security deal with Taiwan. A bit confusing, <laughs> that's why I'm wearing a lot of mess today. So Lady Fan is not a very happy lady at the moment, okay? He's extremely pissed off at Western independent media regarding what they're saying about Taiwan. For example, here he she showed a video uh, of what Johnny Harris, another YouTuber, said regarding Taiwan. All of this, the United States has made the decision to send a bunch of American officials to Taiwan, which is the exact thing they know will just make China really mad. And here she said this, okay? Johnny is against sending representatives to Taiwan. Well, that's the wrong kind of mindset, according to her. And she said that, listen, US is here to maintain 
the status quo of Taiwan. If they don't send people over, they'll be against their promise of helping Taiwan remaining in the status quo. Okay, and in addition, they defend argue that these people are all ex officials of Uni United States, and that shouldn't make China government mad. And then she showed another video about another YouTube channel, which is a massive YouTube channel. I don't even know this YouTube channel exists. It's TYT, the Young Turks, with over 5 million subscribers. Here's the video. Remember in Ukraine, Russia had put in about, like over 100,000 troops on the border. I think it was like 175. Right, so you could say, well, man, they're on the border and they've got a 40 mile line of tanks ready to go. China has nothing like that now. Yeah, from every once in a while, they'll put out statements, etc. But there's, they've not surrounded the island. There's no uh, military buildup that's headed towards the island right now or on the border or anything along those lines. Uh, so we come in yep. and go, hey, why don't we agitate you? Oh yeah, yeah. Totally. We're gonna spend more money to build weapons pointed at you. What are you gonna do about it, huh? It's so obvious we're trying to pick a fight. So she argued that while CCP has been, the Chinese government have been very aggressive with their stand, okay? They've been locating and placing artilleries all along the coastline uh, facing towards Taiwan. They installed over 1,500 cruise missile and the number still increasing. There's a lot of planes fly around Taiwan, combat jets, and sometimes fly into the territory of Taiwan airspace. And then there's also Chinese aircraft carrier rotating, you know, surrounding the Taiwanese island, being very proactive. And this is a clear sign, right? China is trying to invade Taiwan and change the status quo. And she also explained that, well, that's why we buy weapons from United States and work with US on defense and with other alliances such as Japan's and Philippines. And towards the end of her video, she played a clip of President Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan saying this. We are an independent country as already, and uh, we call ourselves Republic of China, Taiwan. So the, basically, the president of Taiwan came on and said that, well, we are already an independent nation, but we just don't want to declare it to avoid risking a war. And Lady Fan, at the end of the video, she made three points, okay? The US is not the party that is so in tension here. China is, okay, mainline China is. The second point, she said that, international community lacks the understanding of Taiwan's lawful existence. There's a lot of argument regarding that point, and I don't want to get into that. It's kind of boring already. It's been going on for decades. But here, the last point she made, which is, I think, extremely intelligent of her. Okay, this is what she said. Only by talking about freedom and democracy, these shared values, is not enough. What do other countries have to gain by supporting Taiwan? Or how can other countries benefit from supporting Taiwan? That's ultimately the most important determined factor when it comes to Taiwan's independent future. Wow, that is actually very, very true and I would say intelligent, yes, of her to say that. But again, like I said, all narrative, I'm okay with that. And, and to be honest with you guys, throughout my life, my opinion on Taiwan independence has been more or less indecisive most of the time. I grew up with a lot of Taiwan friends when I studied here in uh, California. Back then, there's not that many Chinese mainland who come to uh, study in the United States. And most of the Chinese you met are usually from either Taiwan or sometimes Singapore or Hong Kong, because back then the mainland Chinese economy is still very poor and most people cannot afford to send their kids to school here in United States. Okay, now on to the professor. Again, I cannot tell you guys his identity just to protect him. 
And I think he's just on another level to me. It's not just what he said here. It's how he presents the entire thing, which sent me out of my room. And I have to come back after, you know, 30 minutes to, to finish the video. And there's one statement he made here. And I'm going to highlight it and, and make a timestamp in the bottom, okay? Which I think is probably the most important statement in my entire channel so far, okay? Let's see what he says here. It is wrong for anyone, especially those in mainline China, to speak blindly against Taiwan's independence. And there's a lot of Chinese out there today. Whenever someone says that Taiwan is an independent country, they will be coming out with clubs and sticks or coming out fully armed as a keyboard warrior, bashing and cursing, forcing their narrative onto others. He thinks that is incorrect because he thinks that most people do not have a solid logical mindset behind that. Why are you against Taiwan independence? What's wrong with that? It is good to have a discussion and debate over this sensitive topic, but the people who involved in such a debate need to present a solid foundation of his or her logical thinking. This is the problem we have today in our world. Many people are very polarized in their own opinion and too protective against different opinions. So when he went on to say the following, okay, why am I against independence? Here we go. The problem with Taiwan independence today is the blind, senseless worship of American-style democracy. This cult-like worshiping of American democracy. This started many decades ago, in which many Taiwan people and politicians put American culture on a holy altar or pedestal, disregarding whether those cultures or so-called values are beneficial or disruptive to its own society. This mindset of as long as Taiwan can Americanize itself, it is the right path. It's because of this dangerous and naive mindset that today's style of Taiwan independence movement get to exist. Okay, now the following part is a bit controversial to listen to, okay? So be patient. The reality of Taiwan independence is to serve United States geopolitical strategical interests. Taiwan is a tool, a nail, used by the United States to hammer its way into China, to destabilize and to disrupt its main geopolitical rival. This kind of American white left culture, things like multicultural society, democratic elected government, freedom, inclusiveness, free media, this and that, all these good sounding slogans are just tools, instruments, to serve United States geopolitical interests, device used to project power and obtain control of a society. Okay, now to the most important line that I've been talking about, okay? Ultimately, the geopolitical strategy of United States is centered around its political, financial, and monetary hegemony. As long as today's China exists as its current form, and as long as United States exists in its current form, Taiwan will always serve as a nail to hammer until China fractures or the nail breaks. I'm not going to translate the entire rest of the article because it gets a little bit depressing. Mainly, he doesn't see that much of a good future of Taiwan. 
and, and things are going to get probably a lot worse before it gets better. But here at the end, okay, he said something very emotional to me. And I want everyone today to hear this. And not just put this into the perspective of Taiwan, but other places around the world, okay? There was a window to reverse the fate of Taiwan, which according to him was back in 2014 to 2016. That's when Taiwan undergoes textbook educational changes regarding how Taiwan's future generation shall define Taiwan. There was also a sunflower student movement in 2014, which China considered to be a color revolution. And the ruling government at that time failed to realize the danger of the situation. Hmm, I wonder what happened elsewhere in 2014. Did something happen in, let's say, Ukraine in 2014? There are many intellectuals today in Taiwan who sense the danger and who started to argue the points that I have been making for the last 10 years. Especially regarding the vital need to correct the direction in which Taiwan is going how the American-style cultural influence is to turn Taiwan into a cannon folder to serve America's geopolitical interests. But, I'm sorry to tell you, it's 10 years too late. The train has already left the station. Uh, you know, President Eisenhower, in his farewell address, uh, wrote about and warned against the power of the uh, military-industrial complex. Uh, I didn't get a chance to make a farewell address, but uh, when I get old enough and decide to retire, and I'm not planning it at the moment, but when I get that old, uh, if I make a farewell address, I think I would warn against the media elitist complex. You know, the media is always talking about uh, the imperial presidency, the power of the imperial presidency. I think we ought to hear a little bit of discussion of the imperial media and its power. You see, presidential power is limited, limited by the courts, limited by the Congress. The media's power is unlimited. Uh, when we think of the media in this country, the problem is uh, that they have a sense of self-righteousness, uh, a double standard on issue after issue after issue. Uh, they can find everything wrong with somebody else, but they will not look inside and ever admit that they could be wrong themselves. Uh, a license to lie, uh, because they can tell an untruth, print an untruth, which some of them consciously do, uh, if it's going to sell newspapers or what have you, or win a prize. Uh, and then they can always get behind the barrier uh, under that case of saying, well, I didn't intend any malice. I had no malice.